one of the things that was a big surprise um, when we were doing the research for For Men Only that Jeff, my husband, and I did together, um, and we were interviewing women to understand some of these things that men don't know about women and what is it that's a big surprise there, the issue of sex and how women approach it and think about it, there were some huge surprises for the men. Because, you know, it's no surprise that usually in our culture and the way that we're biologically wired, it is more likely to be the man who wants it more than his wife. I mean, statistically, that's just the case. Not always. We found about 25% of couples were flipped, um, but more likely that way. And the big surprise for the men was that if it wasn't happening as much as he wanted, often it had nothing to do with what he thought was the primary reason it wasn't, which is men think if it's not happening, it means I'm just not desirable enough. It, that's the only reason. And what we found actually is that's not the case at all. We gave the women who said that they tended to want it less, we gave them all these different reasons on the survey and said, what were the, what were the main reasons? You know what percentage of women said that they wanted it, that, who said they wanted it less, said it was because he just wasn't desirable enough? 4%. Just 4% of women said that. 96% of the women said it was another reason. And what we found is that most of that 96% is due to a biological, physiological difference between men and women. It turns out there's actually two different types of desire. And so the men don't realize there's a whole other type of desire that tends to be much more what wives tend to have, what women tend to have. See, men have what's called assertive desire. And I shouldn't say it's always men, but often. And someone with assertive desire, which is tied to testosterone, it just tends to be that person wants to pursue sex and to initiate it and think about it all the time and be ready at a moment's notice. Uh, that's tied to testosterone. It tends to be more common among men. But there's a whole other type of desire called receptive desire. And someone who has receptive desire is just as willing, just as interested, enjoys it just as much when it's happening, but doesn't have the same desire to pursue it or initiate it and doesn't think about it all the time and sure is not ready at a moment's notice. And that tends to be tied to estrogen. And someone, here's what we tell the men, is that if this is a struggle for you in your relationship, realize that your wife, if she is the one with the receptive desire, she just needs to be approached differently. She needs to know what you've got on your menu for the evening before you get to the bedroom, because she's just not thinking about it. All these other things are going on in her mind. And you know, a lot of men said, there's never a part of the day when I'm not thinking about it, right? But that's not the case with someone who has receptive desire and all this estrogen in her body. And so we need, women need what's called anticipation time, where we need to have our husband flirt with us and sort of wake up that part of, of our brain so that by the time that point of the day comes, we're anticipating it and excited about it and eager for it as opposed to, okay, wait, let me get my brain in gear, which can look very much like rejection to a man. And it's not, it's just a physical difference between men and women. One of the things that um, was a huge surprise, but a really simple solution for the guys, is that they think of their wives as being kind of complicated <laughs> emotionally. And, you know, they'll be having a discussion and all of a sudden she brings in something that, you know, wait a minute, I thought we resolved that three weeks ago. Where'd that come from, right? And here's what men don't realize about women is that the way we process things emotionally is, is very different than the way men process things. And it's because of the way our brains are wired, actually. But what it looks like, and this is the analogy we use in the book, is that what it looks like is, is different because men think of like a computer desktop with one window open at a time. That's what a man's brain is like. He works on one thought at a time. And when that thought is done, he clicks the little X and it goes away and he works on the next thought. And that's just the way man's brain is wired. Well, we women, imagine a computer desktop with 10 windows open all at once and we're bouncing back and forth between all of them. And, and here's what the guys really don't get is that Jeff, as the way Jeff puts it, it's almost like your system is infected with spyware or something because there'll be a window that pops up on top of the 10 and, and it's a thought or a feeling that's bugging us, right? It's a worry, it's a concern. And we click the little X to make it go away and it goes away for like half a second and then pops right back up. And in we just don't have, most women, I think it was 87%, 88%, some number like that on the survey, 
said, we just don't have that ability that men do to close out thoughts that are bothering them. And so when we're bugged by something, you know, our best friend is, we're having an argument or we did really badly on something at work and we're really upset. You know, the, the husband tries to give this great advice, which would be great for him, which is, you know, honey, just don't think about it. <laughs> just don't let it bother you. And we women were like, what does that mean? <laughs> I have no clue what that means. And what that means to a guy is just click the X and make it go away and so that you're not miserable. And instead, here's the deal for women, is that we really don't have that capacity. Most women, not all, but most women. And instead, women have to take some action to resolve it. Otherwise, it's gonna keep coming back up. And so realize that when you say to your, to your wife, you know, honey, don't worry about if you put the garage door down. I'm sure you put the garage door down. And if you didn't, yeah, it's just two, two hours while we're at the movie. And she might go, oh, okay, you know, but inside she's not going to enjoy the next two hours of that movie, really, because that window is going to keep popping back up. But if you just say, you know what, honey, why don't you call the neighbors across the street and see if, if they can look out their window and see if you put the garage door down. Oh, okay, okay. You know, because that means that you can enjoy the next couple of hours. That one little thing, helping her close her windows, asking her, do you have an open window? You know, what do we do to resolve this? That is huge. It gains men huge brownie points. It's a very simple thing, but it really makes her feel loved. You know, there's all sorts of surprises that the men have as well. When, um, when Jeff and I were doing the research on for men only, on how women think, and uh, Jeff, one of the things that he confessed later <laughs> is that he really wasn't sure women could be understood. <laughs> like he was really reluctant to tackle this research project. And we really proved to him that unlike what some men think, that it actually is much more simple than men think to understand their wife and to make her happy. And so here's one of the primary big surprises that men have about, about women is that even the most secure and confident and capable woman um, running underneath the surface, even in a great relationship, is this, is this underground question that's basically saying, does he really love me? You know, is, are we really going to always be close? And here's really the biggest thing is, would he choose me all over again? And 80% of the women said that they have this constantly running underneath the surface. It's kind of the equivalent of how guys have running underneath their surface this question of, do I measure up? And for women, the question is, would he choose me all over again? And so here's the problem is that, you know how easy it is as a man to maybe see disrespect where she doesn't intend it and to say, oh gosh, that really hurt. I can't believe she criticized me like that. She must not respect me as a husband. She must not think I'm a very good father. Right? And the woman doesn't necessarily mean to, to say that. It happens on the reverse as well, is it's so much more easy than the men realize for a woman to feel like, oh, he doesn't love me. He's not pleased with me. And to have this feeling when, when that insecurity is triggered, it feels like this, uh, are we okay? And what men may not realize is that there is this enormous power that is released in the relationship, this enormous ability to make her happy. If he will just, when that uh, feeling rise, rises up because of you've had a conflict or whatever is going on, for him to reassure her, for him to say, I know, look, look, we're at odds with each other. I need some space. I can't talk about this right now, but honey, we're okay. That is this enormous difference, and it helps the woman really go, okay. Now, you kind of do have to come back around <laughs> and talk about it. You can't just use that as the automatic escape route and ignore it for the next four days because, you know, the women kind of said, if I have to chase him down to talk about it, then you kind of lose some of the, the brownie points you got from doing that. But for the guys to just realize, to just, she just needs to feel that reassurance. And the other thing actually for guys to know is you can actually prevent that feeling from rising up. You can actually prevent that insecurity in her from rising up simply by pursuing her. And this is an everyday kind of thing. And guys already kind of know what this looks like because it's what you did when you were dating. 
to say, you know, I would choose you all over again. I am choosing you every day. And guys hear me say that and they're like, oh, that was exhausting. I got married so I could stop doing that. <laughs> and, and what we tell the men, Jeff and I do marriage conferences a lot. And, what we tell the men is, you know what, it is not what you're thinking. It's not the big candlelight dinners and, you know, the picnics in the park and the stuff that kind of is exhausting for the men. It's, it is these little simple things. It can be as little as reaching across and taking your hand when you're walking across a parking lot. That says, I would choose you all over again. These little things. And, um, and that, by the way, for the men to be aware is... It's so simple, but it is so impactful. And when it's missing, that is also very impactful because men feel very competent and they, they want to try to do these things that they feel competent at. Like, you know, I may not be good at saying I love you. I, I may not be... I may not be, you know, good at the frills and the flowers and all that kind of stuff, but doggone it, I can work real hard, right? You know, I can be out and busting my tail 70 hours a week to provide for the family, and that says I love you. But for the woman, yeah, that's good. It's not like that's bad. But that doesn't speak love to most women the same way that men think it will. We found on our surveys about 30% of women said that does speak love to them in a very powerful way and that they feel really secure with the finances, knowing that the finances are there. But 70% of the women said there's something else much more important. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have this one other thing, the money won't mean very much. And that one other thing is this sense of this daily pursuit and the security in the relationship and the knowledge that yes he does love me and he would choose me all over again he does reach across and take my hand when we're walking across a parking lot you know we had we have one couple that that we know that is really having a dreadful time in their relationship and 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 I've heard this so many times where the wife is saying yeah he took us to foreign countries for our vacations and he works all this and he pays all the bills and all that's good but I just wish he'd put his arm around me in church you know, she doesn't feel loved by the vacations and the money and the, this, the putting his arm around her or taking her, the hand, saying, I love you, or saying these little things like, wow, you look beautiful. These little things that guys just don't realize are such big deals for 70% of women. That is what speaks security to them. One of the most encouraging surprises that I found out about men is that we women have bought into this idea that our men are sort of unromantic. And they could take it or leave it. They don't really care. You know, you see on the, the sitcoms the, the guy giving his wife the power saw for her birthday and you kind of roll your eyes and you're like, yeah, whatever. I was shocked when I found out that, that men statistically on the survey, they were just as romantic as their wives are. They want to have that sense of romance with their wives as much as we do. And we kind of go, well, why don't, you do, <laughs> why don't you do something about it? And what I found on the survey that was so interesting is there was actually two different reasons why the men didn't come across to their wives as seeming to want romance, even though they did. And the most important one was this sense of they so want to do a good job. For men, it's all about what they do for their wives. That's they want to be their wife's hero. They, they so want to make her happy. They want to be the man that, that, that she needs. But they kind of are a little insecure about whether they'll be able to do a good job at this romance thing because a lot of guys said it just feels a little clumsy, like it's not their natural habitat, right? So they want it, but it feels a little clumsy. And that's a feeling that guys really don't like. You know, this feeling of inadequacy is a huge negative feeling for a guy. I've had men who say, you know what? I will make myself a fool for you, you know, to do something romantic that's a little outside my comfort zone. I'll make myself a fool for you. But if you tease me about not quite getting the candlelight dinner right, it'll be five years before I try that again. And maybe not then. And I realized, oh my gosh, there were all these times that, that my husband was trying to do something. And it's like, one of the men said, it's like, imagine that you've got your little five or six year old son who's a kindergartner and he's just made his little ceramic 
you know, ashtray or whatever at school. And he's brought it up to his mom and he's going, look what I did. It's all lumpy and misshapen, you know, misshapen. And, you know, the mom doesn't go, well, you didn't quite get that right. The mom's like, oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Thank you for trying. I love it. And he's all happy. And this, this husband said, that's us <laughs> inside whenever we're trying to do something for our wives. And, and that sense of, wow, thank you so much. I love it. I'm so happy. Oh, that's the, the fuel that men need to continue. The second reason why um, we as women tend not to see our husbands as romantic, you know, is, is that it's not just that they feel kind of, you know, insecure about, am I doing a good job? You know, it's also that to guys that romance tends to look different as well and they want the candlelight and the flowers and the walks on the beach and stuff like we do but there's also something else that they want which is they want to go out and play together and they find that really romantic to go out and play with their wife and um and i was really surprised to hear guys say things like this one man i was interviewing on an airplane i heaven help the poor man stuck next to me on the airplane for two hours because i'm constantly doing these research interviews um, but this, this one man, we were talking about this, and he said, I'll give you an example. He said, this morning, um, it was a Saturday night, and he said, my buddies and I get together about once every five, six weeks and go play a round of golf. And there's four of us, and we've been doing this for years. And he said, in, in front of us this morning on the golf course, there was a husband and wife playing golf together. And he said, every one of us men was jealous that we wanted to be out there playing with our wives. And you know, guys need buddy time and all that too, but it really pointed out to me that guys wanna go out and do things together and even like wandering the, the aisles of Home Depot. You know, honey, you wanna go to Home Depot with me? He's proposing romantic outing. It's just the two of us. Let's go have an adventure. Let's go poke around. Let's go do something. And once I realized that, I saw some of the things that Jeff had been suggesting in a whole new way, you know, where he would say, hey, you wanna, you wanna go to the grocery store or the farmer's market or whatever? And I'd go, uh, you know, we have some friends coming over for dinner, so I probably should vacuum. And it was kind of the same thing as if he'd said, hey, you wanna have a candlelight dinner? And I'd said, uh, no, I'd rather vacuum. So I saw this as a whole new opportunity and, and it's really cool once you realize that that's what you're seeing. You know, it was funny when I did the, the, all of the s subjects um, for the book, um, one of the things I did at the end um, was I asked the men at the end of the survey, and I said, okay, we talked about all these subjects. What, what's the most important one? The way, I, the way I worded it was, what's the one most important thing you wish your wife knew? but feel you can't explain to her or tell her, you know? And yeah, we got some of the stereotypical answers that you would think, I think 10% of the men said, I want more sex, you know? Um, but even then, it was with this like emotional, I wish you understand how important that is to me, to help me become the man that I wanna be. Um, but the top answer by far, when the men could say anything, the one most important thing that I wish my wife knew is how much I love her. And that was a huge encouraging surprise to me and to a lot of women um, because so many men were basically saying, you know, I, I feel like it's not that I don't tell her I love her, I tell her all the time, it's that I can never seem to get it across how much I love her and get it across in a way that she'll believe me. And, um, and I realized how much the men really have goodwill towards their wives and how much they want to be their hero and how much they want to make her happy. And so for me, it was a huge encouragement to realize there was all this stuff that I didn't know about my husband that was so important to him. And it's a good opportunity for me to have goodwill back and to really learn how to be the woman he needs um, since I just didn't know some of these things before. So one of the reasons why, um, why husbands approach their wives for physical intimacy when they're kind of at odds and the wife is like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> it said he's trying to build closeness because for, for in, the, in that physical intimacy time, in that time of sexual intimacy, there is this huge release of these hormones like oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone. They, they call it the cuddle hormone. And it's, it's, a, it's a hormone that's released in many occasions in a woman's life. If, if she's sitting down and having a, a really deep conversation with a good girlfriend. There's oxytocin that's being released and she feels that real close bond with her friend and it's a, a real intimacy building. She has oxytocin released when she's nursing a baby and it's that bonding thing. Well, in a man's life, there's really only one time 
<laughs> that oxytocin is released, and that's at the height of his sexual experience. And so he's automatically, a husband is automatically going for that when he is feeling a, a lack of closeness. He wants to build it again, and he wants to have that feeling back. And, and that's a really important thing for the teenagers to realize is that this is gonna bond them together. And now they're bonded together, and now they have all these emotional concerns rising up. Can I really trust her? And oh, is he gonna leave me? And it adds this, you've got this bond, and at the same time, when that pulls away, it tears at you so much more than it would have if you hadn't crossed that line. So another reason for what God says.